Work has officially begun on the Moliné landslip project. Details of this story and more in the National Report. I think I decided. I want this one. Excuse me. I couldn't help but overhear your conversation. Can you tell me why it is you decided to purchase this fridge? Sure, because it's a lot cheaper, looks good, and if I should say, does the same job as all the others. I see. Can I show you something? No problem. See what the sign says? It said this appliance uses natural refrigerants. So... This refrigerator uses green cooling technology with natural refrigerants which is environmentally friendly and is not harmful to the environment and the ozone layer. Equipment like these will greatly reduce the electricity bill, last longer, perform better, and protect the environment. And will give you the peace of mind in knowing that you are doing your part in creating a more environmentally responsible world for current and future generations. So you're telling me that this fridge right here may cost a little more now, but I can save on my electricity bill it will perform better and last longer than this other one and have all the things you just said? Oh yeah. Remember, when purchasing an AC or refrigerator for your home or business, be sure to ask for the one that uses natural refrigerants. Go green. Let's be well. With the details to the news for Tuesday, October 18, 2022, I am Kristen Mitchell. The rehabilitation of the Molinier Landslip project has officially begun. On Tuesday, a groundbreaking ceremony was held, signaling the start of construction after some delays due to issues that had to be addressed by the current government before moving forward. Boots are on the ground with contractor Avanish Dabade of Construction and Industrial Equipment. He assures the public that work will be done with the highest standards using modern and civil engineering technology. So far, 20 community members have been hired to work on the project and they will benefit from specialized training on the job. We will assure that all enter this project will work in terms of the, all the parameters uh, guided by the Western Engineering. Uh, for the quality and the safety, we will work under, his, under their guidance. And as this project is a more technical project, we will uh, ensure to be on the, all the marks and we give all the best quality, what is desirable for this project. And on the timeline part, we will assure you, we will complete this project on, within the timeline. And uh, currently for the local, uh, all the staff and everybody, currently we are deputed around 20 people from the local area. And major supervision, supervision also we are taking from locally. The critical technical part for the piling other thing, these all the supervisors will be coming from other locations. But here mostly we are trying to guide and improve the community here in terms of the technical skills. So that is our main motto and we will be assured that we will uh, complete this project within safety with all the parameters. Minister for Mobilization, Implementation and Transformation, Honorable Andy Williams, says he is confident in the abilities of the contractors and looks forward to the project being completed in the stipulated time one year. CIE is a solution company and they were given the contract because they have experience in this sort of work. And uh, you know, I would love for us to, as we join with the contractor, to see how, as much as you can learn and you can take from them so that in the future, you know, we don't have to call, you know. <laughs> we can use our local people to get a job done. But, and I just want to say lastly before I leave that, the Ministry for Implementation, Transformation, Mobilization, will work closely with the Ministry of Infrastructure to ensure that this project is completed on time, and not just on time, but within budget. Health Minister and NDC caretaker for the area, Gaetan Lacret, says this project is a long time coming. Since the latter part of 2019, the Molinaire Road was shut off to vehicular traffic. Minister Lacret believes infrastructural development creates opportunities for households and communities. It also speaks to opportunity for employment, opportunity for schools, opportunity for healthcare. As such, I am particularly pleased, uh, pleased 
because I wear two caps this morning as the caretaker for the National Democratic Congress for St. George Northwest, as well as Minister for Health, Wellness and Religious Affairs as I stand here this morning. I am pleased because I know that this has been a long time coming and that the residents are indeed going to be overjoyed as we break ground this morning. The Grenada Industrial Development Corporation, GIDC, has begun its strategic planning process to guide operations over the next three years. A session was held at Radisson on Tuesday where representatives from a cross-section of the various sectors gathered to share their ideas, experiences, and offer suggestions that can help in upgrading the services at the GIDC. Acting Prime Minister Honorable Dennis Cornwall challenged the GIDC to play a greater role in monitoring businesses and investors they would have helped off the ground. He says this is to ensure they are keeping up with standards and serving the Grenadian community in the best way possible. IDC happens to be the investment arm of the government of Grenada, both for local and international businesses. And they were part and part in the business of bringing in business to the country as well as to create small businesses um, environment for the persons who have spoken here this morning. And while that is good, I would say that IDC has to go a bit further in ensuring that once those businesses get off the ground, we ought to make sure that they follow the guidelines that were given to them up front. Let's take, for example, we have major, major hotels being constructed on the island. We have heard of issues of, in some cases, not proper environmental impact assessment being done. So we have to ensure that once those projects are being scrutinized, that we ensure that every aspect of the approval should be taken on board and be followed up by IDC to ensure that at the end of the day, we are adding value to our communities. Newly appointed Chairman Rodney George says the GIDC has been acting as a guide and helping hand for small and micro businesses over the years and will ensure this continues on an even larger scale under its new strategic plan. I think there are a lot of budding entrepreneurs out there with fire in their bellies and all they need is a push across the finish line, a helping hand. And I think that is one of the roles that GID should be playing to empower these entrepreneurs. And I, I, I know the PM is, is very passionate about that, about assisting you know, micro and small businesses to get there, open their businesses, and uh, contribute to the society. Two beneficiaries of services from the GIDC, Graham Williams of Renegade Rum Distillery and Kanisha Redhead of Canis Naturals, spoke highly of the assistance they received from the cooperation. I must compliment the GIDC, who are very committed to our project and who worked very closely with us to facilitate the agreement, which led to the successful startup of the Renegade Rum Group. My exposure to the Grenada Investment Development Corporation goes back a very long time because as a local manufacturer with my family business, Westall Estate Limited and its subsidiaries Island Ice Company and Umbrella Beach Bar, we have been able to benefit from many investment schemes managed by the corporation. I must commend the board of directors and the executive management for the growth and enhancement of this organization over the past three decades. GIDC has allowed me as a small manufacturer to dream bigger than I could ever dream. My goal eventually is to expand to the point where I can hire especially young women. That has always been my dream, to not only teach them what I do, but to help them to understand that a job, it's not always that you have to work for someone. And that is what GIDC has done for me. Consultant Cheryl Mathis has been working with the GIDC to prepare the strategic document. 
I think there's a few things that the GIDC is looking to do. They've got a mandate with a new government and with a new board uh, in order to focus very clearly on a few key areas and make sure that those priorities are, uh, are managed appropriately. I think that the reason you're seeing so many stakeholders in the room is that uh, it's really about ensuring that the one-stop shop idea gets uh, built out and aligned so that uh, people who are coming here to invest or people who are looking to grow businesses here locally can do that with the least friction in their process as they try to move forward. And so that's, I think, going to be a big part of the conversation today. Prime Minister the Honourable Deacon Mitchell leaves the country today to attend the 72nd meeting of the OECS Authority in Little Bay, Montserrat. The meeting, scheduled from October 19th to 20th, will be held under the chairmanship of Honourable Joseph Farrell, Premier of Montserrat. Prime Minister Mitchell will return on October 21st, 2022. Minister for Infrastructure and Physical Development, Public Utilities, Civil Aviation and Transportation, the Honorable Dennis Cornwall, has been appointed Acting Prime Minister in the absence of Prime Minister Mitchell. This is a national report. The news will continue after the break. Prepare for hurricane. Make sure you have your radio and your batteries to waterproof flashlight candles. We'll do tin stuff, garbage bag, first aid kit. Come on, people, make sure you have it. Clean water in a container and a hurricane plan. Hear me, no man. Hurricane damage is beyond your control. Surviving the aftermath is up to you. Have a hurricane plan. It can save your life and your family too. Prepare for hurricane. Your hair, prepare for hurricane. The United States Agency for International Development and the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States Commission has signed an agreement which is expected to strengthen juvenile justice systems for youth in the Eastern Caribbean. The partnership called Opportunities to Advance and Support Youth for Success Program, OASIS, is a four-year $5.3 million award that will be implemented by the OECS. It is focused on strengthening juvenile justice systems in six independent member states of the OECS, which includes Grenada, St. Lucia, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, the Commonwealth of Dominica, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The project will directly benefit youth in conflict with the law. A virtual signing ceremony was held on Monday between USAID representative David Billings and Dr. Carleen Radix, head of the Human and Social Division, OECS. During the virtual ceremony, USAID Regional Representative David Billings explained the objectives. OASIS will help the St. Lucian justice system establish a well-coordinated and evidence-based diversion process to hold young offenders accountable for their actions. While shifting away from using court oversight and the threat of prison as a first resort. While the OASIS program targets at-risk youth, it also works with their families and communities to emphasize the importance of a strong support system in the, in, in the reintegration process. For this reason, it is designed as a holistic approach, supporting efforts to strengthen existing and invest in new reform programs that provide skills development, psychosocial support, and family interventions for young people. The program also supports partner countries in implementing and institutionalizing a case management system to monitor young offenders from their first point of contact with law enforcement all the way through their successful reintegration into society. Governments wants healing to be the focus of events surrounding October 19th Remembrance Activity on Wednesday. On Wednesday, October 19th, 1983, Grenada's revolutionary leader, Maurice Bishop, along with other cabinet ministers and civilians, were executed during a military coup led by Bernard Quard. They were executed on Fort George, formerly known as Fort Rupert. Minister for Culture Honorable Ron Redhead says government's new policy for October 19th is to have a week-long list of activities known as recognition and remembrance. During an interview with GIS on Tuesday, the Culture Minister Honorable Ron Redhead said government cannot ignore what has happened on the ill-fated day, but he says the time for healing is necessary. The activity on the 19th essentially is going to remember um, 
the slain leader at the time, Morris Bishop, and other cabinet colleagues and friends who were uh, assassinated on the 4th. It speaks specific to understanding the role that we as government has to play um, in terms of healing the nation. I think for a long period, the history of the revolution and its demise has been a scourge on our history and is essentially preventing us from finding national unity. So the need to recognize that day and remember what occurred, but of course, as government, to play the leading role to bring us to the stage of healing is critical. So the event is going to mark that. And it fits into the week-long series of uh, celebrations, or not celebrations in this instance, but uh, recognition, remembrance, that we would like to create going forward for the demise of the Green Revolution, understanding its importance in our history, and understanding that that period has passed. It is time that we shed skin, and as a nation, we begin the process of healing. Acting Prime Minister Honorable Dennis Cornwall will hoist a white flag at Fort George on October 19th. Minister Redhead spoke of the significance. It symbolizes uh, uh, coming out from the dark period, the peace that we want to promote and the healing of the nation. So whereas black would symbolize mourning, but because we have mourned for so long, Remember the bodies, they did not receive a proper burial. At least in this instance, government is interested in promoting the healing of the nation, the collective of all, not just the sides that were affected. So the white flag symbolizes that peace and healing that we want to promote. The Grenada national netball team continues to shine at the World Cup qualifiers in Jamaica. The Spice Girl team secured their third win at the tournament at a game against Antigua and Barbuda, 62 for 29. The team had a great game overall on Monday night with Latisha Cato leading the pack with excellent shooting averages over the past three games. Grenada will be facing Trinidad and Tobago tonight at 7.15 local time. Both Trinidad and Grenada are unbeatable thus far with six points each of their three games. Intersector Netball Tournament continues this evening at 6 p.m. Tanti Netball Complex. Grenada Union of Teachers faces SGU TAMCC combined. That story has brought us to the end of the National Report for today, Tuesday, October 18th, 2022. On behalf of the entire news and production team here at the Government Information Service, I am Chris M. Mitchell saying thank you for joining us.